Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Historian Stitch. And as I said in our last video last week, um, or second video last week, rather, um, I am going to be showing you guys how to properly get dressed and explain um, why each layer is important, or at least most of the layers. The first few that I will be putting on here in a minute, um, basically everybody would be wearing slightly different variants, obviously, for men versus the women. Um, but for the most part, uh, your basic beginning layers um, would be for men. Um, long underwear, essentially what it would look like for us at least. Um, stockings, probably some garters to help hold those stockings up, um, as well as your shoes. For women, that layering gets a little bit more complicated because you go from your shoes and stockings to pantalettes to your shift or chemise, depending on uh, which variation you really want to wear. I prefer the chemise for, over the shift um, just because of where it sits on my shoulders. It kind of looks a little nicer, especially when you're switching from work dress to a day dress. Um, but yeah, that's basically where we're starting. Um, before we get into the clothing itself though, um, what we look at as layering today is typically anything that is overlapping another garment. Um, so in the winter, you might have a long sleeve shirt on with a t-shirt on and then a sweatshirt over that, and that's your version of layering. In the 1800s, especially the 1850s and 1860s, uh, that's a little bit different. You are still considering anything overlapping a layer, but then once you get to the dress, you don't stop there with the layers. Um, today, because we're going over a work dress, you will also see an apron as a layer, as well as the jewelry, your hairnet, um, bonnets, uh, shawls, anything like that is going to be considered another layer. So typically, what they would be wearing at the time is anywhere from 9 to 12, 13 layers, um, at least for the women. For men, it tends to be uh, 4 to 5 layers instead. Um, but yeah, that's basically where we're starting, and I will get the first layers on. All right, so now I have my first layers on. Uh, my first layers being my stockings, as well as garters. Um, when I put my garters on, I tend to, uh, after I have them tied, because I have uh, knitted ones, from a 1860s Godey's Magazine pattern. Um, basically, I tie them uh, around the upper part of my calf, and then I'll roll my stocking down over top of that so that the stocking doesn't fall down. Uh, that is one of the ways that you can wear your garters and stockings, or you can leave your stocking pulled up. Um, the one problem I find with that is that your stocking will still fall down despite the garter being there. Um, but nonetheless, that is one of the ways you can do it. Um, I then have my pantalettes and my chemise on. Um, the difference between a chemise and a shift is basically where it sits on your shoulders. So obviously this one sits just off my shoulders. If I'm standing up straight, it doesn't fall down. Um, whereas a shift has uh, basically the straps over the top. You still have the sleeves. Um, the sleeves on these garments helps protect the dress um, from basically your sweat for the most part, sweat and dirt. Um, it also, the sh uh, chemise or shift, whatever you are wearing, will protect your corset from your body as well. Um, corsets are much harder to wash than your under layers. Um, along with my underlayers, I have my first petticoat already. Um, this first petticoat is typically called a privacy petticoat. Um, I tend to constantly wear mine, mainly because, especially in a work dress, um, climbing fences, you're doing manual labor, essentially. Um, and if your skirt somehow gets pulled up, you don't want everything showing. Um, Basically, it's a modest, modesty petticoat. 
Now, once you have these on, then you want to put your boots on. Boots at the time could be anywhere from ones like these, where you have the elastic in them. Um, there's a misconception that they didn't have elastic in the 1800s, but they did. Um, the difference being that your elastic at the time is going to be anywhere from uh, 3 to 15 inches wide. You're not going to find the really thin stuff like what we have today. Um, another version of boots that ladies especially would be wearing would be um, on the foot, but could be useful. Um, lace up boots. Now, lace up boots are really useful, especially if you are in a work dress. Um, so, especially since we tend to do um, mid to late war events, um, I have a tendency to wear an old pair of brogans that used to be my brother's. Um, those brogans help keep the rocks and dirt and whatever else is out in the fields from getting into my shoes. Um, unlike these pairs where they stretch and move just enough that they, uh, you will definitely get rocks in your shoes. Um, the other nice thing about the brogans is that in the 1860s, uh, throughout the war period, you would find a lot more uh, people able to work on those versus ladies' shoes. Um, ladies' shoes usually have really thin soles on them rather than the thick um, kind of boxy layers. So those are going to last longer than these will. Um, so for the most part, um, I do still wear these fairly constantly. Um, but they are also tend to be more of my I'm going to be in a house or I'm going to be just kind of hanging out and doing ladylike things rather than working shoes. Now the next layer that they would be wearing is their corset. I have here, you all have been seeing, if you follow on Facebook, you've been seeing pictures of this one as it progressively comes along. I have only just begun to put the flossing on this one, but it's getting there. Um, you could have corsets anywhere from ones like these to soft stays. Um, a soft stay in the 1800s is basically going to be a corded corset. Um, looks a lot like the more 1820s, 1830s corsets that you can find, um, just a little bit longer. Rather than stopping about here or going all the way down, you're going to stop right at your hip bone with the horse itself. Um, now, unlike what Hollywood says about these wonderful contraptions, they are not torture devices. Um, your corset can actually be your friend, especially when you're putting on a work dress and working for the day, um, because this will provide back support. Now, I do not tight lace. I do not suggest tight lacing. That's not to say that there weren't some people in the period who didn't, um, but it wasn't a common thing. Uh, tight lacing tended to be with the upper classes. And now when I say tight lacing, I mean where these laces are in the back, you're pulling them as close together to get the tiniest waist possible. When you are upper middle class and higher, in social status, you can get away with such things because you're not having to go out and work for a living. Whereas what we tend to do, we need to be able to get up and move around much more. So now with these, um, there are some people who are not flexible enough to put theirs on, um, at least by themselves, and there is nothing wrong with that. I tend Depending on the day, I have definitely needed help getting into mine. Um, but anymore, I have realized that you can leave these bottom ones laced, or at least I can, and I leave the upper ones unlaced, mainly because I tend to tie this part in the front while the back part stays tied in the back. And one of the nice things about this corset in particular is this green band. That's an extra waistband. Uh, built into the corset proper. Um, that helps 
protect the corset further, um, this section is where all of the petticoats will be sitting. Now I have three petticoats and then the skirt to go over top. Um, in some cases, there will be a hoop here first or a cage, and then all the petticoats on top of that, on top of that, forgive me. Um, but um, basically the fact that there is a waistband here is also alluding to the fact that this garment isn't just helping with support, but it is also uh, working as a barrier. There is about 15 pounds of material sitting over there um, that I am about to put on my person. If you don't have your corset on, all of that weight is sitting directly on your hips. Um, with the corset, that weight is suddenly lifted and better supported throughout the entirety of your uh, upper half for the most part. Now, usually once I've gotten my corset on, I will then, because we are doing a work dress impression here, your kerchief. I admit I didn't know about kerchiefs until um, I started working at Frontier Culture Museum. Um, but basically, you would want to put it on next. And obviously, it covers not just your neck, but it's also covering the rest of um, the rest of your skin that would be rubbing against the material of your dress. Now this, like the rest of it, is going to be mainly to help um, protect that dress. Uh, it keeps the sweat off. If you need, I talked about this in my mask video. Um, your kerchief can also be used as mask wear. Um, if you're out in the field and in period costume, you can put your kerchief on and it helps um, at least block the dust from your face. It might not fully protect you from everything that is out in the field with you, but it's at least a start. Now, I particularly like fairly large kerchiefs because you can tuck it um, into whatever part of your course that you want to, as well as in the back. That helps keep it from riding up when you put your dress on and it keeps it there throughout the day. Now, after you have your kerchief on, you can then start putting on your petticoats. In a work dress, the first one you want is something akin to this. Obviously, it's very stiff. Um, this is a corded corset. You can see the cording in it. That helps stiffen it and then you starch the crap out of it. Um, that starching stiffens it even further. And basically, this particular one, um, not this particular one, but this petticoat is going to work kind of as your hoop or cage would. Um, a corded petticoat makes it so that you don't have to have that extra seven or eight other petticoats. That would be far too many. That would be more of the 1840s version of this, um, for fancier dress at least. Three to four is probably the better number to state with that. Um, this petticoat kind of sticks out a little bit more. It'll help hold the skirt itself away from me. Um, this is super useful when you're out working and putting on a work dress because you're not tripping over so many petticoats. Um, in comparison to wearing a hoop, this is also helpful because um, it's smaller. You can fit through spaces a little bit easier. You're not having to look at people going, no, I can actually squish. Um, this way, it's just kind of down, a little bit flatter, not quite as flamboyant, and you can still look correct while wearing it all. So my next one here, I'm going to put it on backwards, actually, but um, my next layers are going to be petticoats. 
the normal version. And these petticoats um, help smooth out the body um, where the corded was very kind of bulky and didn't want to lay nicely. This is already smoothing from my waist down. Now I tend to wear two just because I want that full smoothness effect, but I also am wearing a very specific one on top. This one has pockets. Now, despite common misconception, there are lots of misconceptions about this period, they did have pockets. Pockets are the most useful thing you could ever have in a dress, whether it's in the skirt of your dress proper. Um, maybe you have a separate tie-on ones, or you can have them like these, and it's hiding in your petticoat instead of out in the open. Now, in pockets like these, you can put a small pocket knife. Um, you can carry a small wallet. You don't feel like carrying a handbag, at least. Um, I have put my phone in this pocket. Um, it works pretty well in the work dress situation because the way this um, ensemble moves is a little bit funky anyway. If I put a phone in this pocket while wearing a hoop, on the other hand, the phone's weight will actually weigh it down and everyone will know that you have something far too heavy and probably modern in that pocket. So, um, now that I have two petticoats on, I can then put on my dress. Um, side note about why they wore so many petticoats, especially in work dresses, is the um, safety effect. Oddly enough, you would think that wearing this many layers would be detrimental to your health, especially around fireplaces and such. But by wearing this many layers, I can actually get closer to the fireplace than men typically could. Um, I have to watch my skirt skirts far more than they would, obviously. Um, but I can stand next to a fireplace far longer than they would because of how many layers there are. It takes much longer for the heat to seep through from that fire to me than it would through the two layers that the men are wearing. Now, our dress here, the dress in its most useful aspect is to cover everything that you are currently wearing. Typically, if we were in the period, the fact that anybody is seeing me dressed quite like this would be far too scandalous. Therefore, you put on your dress and you don't have to worry about it. Now, dresses, in their own odd way, actually had a second point of being worn, other than just to look pretty and nice and not have to worry about all of these other layers. Um, it shows your social class, for the most part. Now, this one... Is a little bit faded, but you can see the printed pattern on it. It has some flowery designs. Um, this dress would be probably worn by somebody a little bit um, middle class, upper middle class, for the most part at least. Whereas someone in the far lower classes is either going to have a simpler version, um, where it's just a check pattern, or maybe. Um, It up here. Something akin to this kind of patterning. Um, that isn't to say that lower classes wouldn't be wearing something just as nice as this. It would just probably be um, their Sunday best rather than their everyday work dress. Um, the reason for that being that this material would cost much more to buy than the normal fabric of homespun's um, rough cloths, things like that. Um, the coloration also says something about who you are and the class you are in. Um, blues are 
blues and browns tend to be the more common ones that you find at least surviving, um, whereas the really bright reds and the greens and anything super bright and vibrant isn't going to have lasted as long into this time frame at least, um, mainly because of the uh, harshness of the dyes that they were using to get those really bright colors. You have your arsenic green, and arsenic is really hard on cotton. Um, or you have something akin to this. Um, those colorations are going to also determine how many layers you are wearing underneath. Um, if I were to be wearing red or black, those tend to tended to stain the skin far more, so I would end up needing to wear far more layers underneath. Um, what I just picked up and laid back down here, these are undersleeves. A uh, dress like this with the coat sleeves could have undersleeves under them. Um, especially in the summer months, I don't tend to, but I also realize that you usually have even your wrists covered. Um, unless you're working proper, and then in which case you can actually roll your sleeves up. That is not frowned upon unless you are visiting somebody. If you're going out to visit somebody and you're wearing your work dress, you would definitely want your undersleeves on. Uh, so I now have, in terms of layers, I have my stockings, pantalettes, chemise, privacy petticoat, corset, uh, two petticoats, and then my dress. So I have eight layers on at the moment. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, their version of layers are a little bit different in that the apron and any jewelry I put on, as well as my hairnet, are going to be considered layers as well. So once I put my apron on here, um, this is a pinner's apron. You can't see the flap yet. This part is what pins, hence it being called a pinner's apron, but you could also have um, pinafore aprons, which are the, basically it has a U here, covers the back, and then ties here and here. Um, those weren't quite as popular. Uh, they were slowly making a comeback. They were more popular with younger girls, whereas pinner's aprons, Mind buttons in the back, but some tie. Um, basically, are going to look something akin to this. In both sides, I'm not going to at the moment, but it covers the entire front of your dress. Um, that way, if you're cooking, this is the first thing that's going to get dirty. You wipe your hands on it, you do whatever you want with this sucker because this is going to get washed far more often than your dress is. Um, you can see how it stops right under the arm, um, and then the skirt of the apron itself falls down. Um, aprons are another big spot where you are going to find um, pockets. The pockets in these skirts and in your petticoats are going to be for uh, personal items that you don't want to lose while um, in your apron pockets, you're probably going to have maybe uh, bobbins of thread, buttons, um, anything that you would need throughout your day to work. Speaking of which, another thing that some uh, ladies would be wearing is something akin to this. This is a Chatelaine. Um, I love mine. I wear it constantly, whether it be a day of modern wear or period wear. Mainly because not only does it have a pocket watch on it and the key, whatever else I want to put on it, usually my fan is here, but it typically will have my sewing scissors on them. Um, on these, you can also put um, needle cases. Uh, you can attach a pencil with a small notebook so you can write down the notes you need throughout the day, things like that. Basically, anything that's going on this little gadget is going to be anything that if I were to just toss it in my sewing basket, it is lost for the foreseeable future. So, um, 
that's basically the general gist of how to get dressed and why each of the layers are important. Um, I'm not quite sure what our next video will be, but I am open for suggestions. Um, I would much rather do something that you all are far more interested in than what than what I'm trying to create and come up with. But um, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please put them below and I will see you all next time.